today on America's Court with Judge Ross. We end up losing money on seats because he didn't mention me that he removed some of the risers. Well, because he was getting pretty old and I had to replace them. But I was never told that. I found this out 15 minutes before the event started. He was money hungry. He jeopardized the entire fundraising event. In my courtroom, it was about equity and fairness. You want him to pay 628? Yes, Your Honor. All right, knock my socks off. Justice should be more than just some foreign concept. I actually want you to learn something. The law talks about something may in fact be true, but can they prove it? And that's what's tough. Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Selena Jensen claims she rented space for an annual fundraiser and says the defendant is to blame for the event losing money. Ms. Jensen is suing Reggie Craig in the amount of $600. Mr. Craig is countersuing for $350. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties have been sworn, Your Honor. Third, get up at the top. Ms. Jensen, you're suing for $600. There's a counterclaim. Mr. Craig, you're suing for $350. You all have a dispute regarding a facility that you were using for a fundraiser. Yes. You didn't make as much money as you thought you were going to make this year. Partly due to the defendant, Mr. Craig. He was money hungry. He jeopardized the entire fundraising event. How long had you been having that event? For five years. I am the athletic director of our high school female basketball team. Okay. And um, it's a private school. Mm -hmm. So, and it's the best program in our area. And there's right. a lot of children that are so academically and talented that they can't afford to go to the school. So we started this fundraiser to help those kids to be able to pay for you know, uniforms and tuition and for them to participate and get the same things that kids that are privileged. And this event is also held on a basketball court. Yes. And Mr. Craig, you work at a facility where this event was being held. Yes. How long have you worked there, sir? A year and a half. And you weren't there the previous years when she was hosting this event? No. Was it this the same year that you came on board when you were having problems with Mr. Craig? Yes. The person that was in his position prior. Oh, yes, Tim. And now you're the new guy in charge. Oh, yes, I am. All right. And I take it you had a different philosophy. Oh, yes, yes, Your Honor. You see, the thing is, I run this park, and I'm trying to make as much money as I can for it. This is a public park. Yes, it is a public park. All right. But I also have a gymnasium, very big. All right. And the public park has a gymnasium. The public park is being funded by taxpayer monies. Yes. It's open to the public for the use and enjoyment of them. Of course. People are able to rent out the gym for a fee. Yes, $100 All right. an hour. Were you used to paying with Tim $100 an Absolutely hour? Absolutely not. How much was Ch Tim charging you to have $600 flat. $600 flat. Well, years. if you charge $100 an hour, that's six hours. That's a long time. You, do you need six hours for a basketball event? Well, it's just because we get such big numbers. We get such a big turnout. It tends to spill over. But yeah, that's, I would say not maybe six hours, probably two to four. Okay, yeah. but, but you were paying $600. Yeah. So if you're saying even if you had it three hours, you're paying $200 an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, why was he being so unreasonable by saying $100 an hour? I didn't want to do an hourly rate because I could say we would do it for two to four hours, but there have been times where it has gone on more than okay. two to four hours. Does that time include setup and breakdown? Yes. Every hour they were there, you were like, I want it to be $100. Yes. Was there an issue between the two of you about that? No, the issue wasn't with that. When I asked to rent the facility again, he um, so sent me the contract by email, but I cannot open the attachment. Did you tell him? Could you resend it because I'm not able to open yes. the document? Yes. Did you get that email from her saying, could you resend it? Honestly, Your Honor, I, you know, I'm very busy with all the all, I just all the asked you, did you get it or not? Uh, no. All right. You still don't have a contract. You're used to yeah. having a contract with Tim. I reached out a few times. You're not responding to her. That's a problem. Well, yeah, but Your Honor, the thing is, you know, I have everything going on over there, you know, with, with, with all the memberships. Well, and one all of the, the things that are going on is when people say they want to reserve the facility. Exactly. That's, that's your job. Yeah, of course. And, and, and I did that. Okay. And I did out of courtesy. Was there you know, I could ultimately a conversation where the two of you say, all right, the contract is done? Um, what happened was, as I'm bringing stuff in to set up 
before the event. Yes. Uh, he stops me and says, before you can set up anything, and I'm literally carrying boxes, and I need you to sign the contract. And I said, well, I reached out to you a few times, oh, yeah, and no. you did not. Well, well, hold on a moment. So you don't get a contract, no. but you move forward with your plans. Do you recall her coming to you and then saying, okay, uh, let's just go forward and do this? Yes, of course. But That's the thing is, I needed her to sign that contract before she even put everything That out makes there. sense to me. Did you sign it? I did, but what, before I signed it, I noticed at the bottom that the rate, because I was still under impression that was $600. Because that's what it always has been. And then I noticed at the bottom before I signed it, it said $1,000. So that's when we yeah. went back and forth on the well, price. Well, $1,000 at $100 an hour is 10 hours. Well, the thing yeah. is, Your Honor, she was using it for the entire day for that day. So I would Stop. say... Is that true? No, that is not true. Coming up on America's Court. We end up losing money on seats because he didn't mention me that he removed some of the risers. Well, because it was getting pretty old and I had to replace them. But I was never told that. I found this out 15 minutes before the event started. And later. He was a planner for the bachelor party. And as I'm going to the club and I'm about to enter, I realized that there's a dress code. They didn't let me in. Did you know that there was a dress code there? Yes, uh, I knew about it. Closed captioning provided by if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Selena Jensen, who is suing Reggie Craig for $600. Did you tell him I'm going to need it for the whole day? No, I did not say for the whole day. Well, what did you say in the email? Because otherwise, I'm just going, he say, she say. Right. I said up to six hours. Do you have a copy of the email? No, I don't have a copy. Do you of the email. have a copy of the email? Uh, this is why we have the documentation right. of things, so there's no ambiguity. Yeah. Because if you don't have anything to show your perspective, and you can't use the facility unless he signs off mm -hmm. on it, you're, you're really at, at, at the expense of whatever it is he says at that point, right? And you're moving forward, and you're carrying things in. So, of course, you you got to sign it right. based on his terms. Yeah. But you weren't happy with the terms. Well, also, what he didn't, he failed to let me know is we have always been able, this is where we make the most amount of our money for the girls, for the program, is the merchandise. Food, beer especially, for the adults, um, popcorn, candy, T-shirts. You set up your own concession stands. Yes. All right. And Tim allowed that before. Well, yes. probably, but... The thing but is, there's a new <laughs> sheriff in town, and you were like, that's not going to happen. No. Well, look, and you know, what did you say would now be the new policy? Yeah, of course. I mean, first of all, we put our own concessions. Okay, so she has to follow that because we're trying to raise money for my facility. Was that a part of the contract, no. saying that anything sold must be through our concessionaires? He said that I could sell ice cream sandwiches and T-shirts. Okay. So, so then, everything else I couldn't. And this was written down? Yeah, and I found that out today. Okay, uh, because at, for whatever reason, you let days go by... And it's not on him, because if you don't sign the contract, he's, he doesn't have to let you they, into the facility. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So did you ultimately agree because you were at the last minute now? That's exactly it. I didn't want to let, you know, the okay. girls down. But he let me pay it 600 That's yeah. what was the agreement yeah, was $600. Was <laughs> so he wasn't being a total jerk. No, the, but that, I'll get to right? that. He was. No, at that I'm, moment. I'm saying yeah. in this, because obviously he didn't just say i'll give it to you for six hundred dollars i had to beg for it yeah you probably said come on let's negotiate and so forth yeah. and he was like okay right at that point yeah because that makes him sound reasonable mm -hmm. and you agreed to the 600 versus the thousand because well because i was trying to be a good public servant here because you know i was trying to give her the benefit of doubt either because you know she had because the previous deal she had was, was with the other guy and was he also flexible with, and I'll let you sell things we're not selling? No, he see, that wasn't in the contract. No. I found out about the things that I couldn't sell the day of the event. Yeah, and oh, that wasn't in the contract, no, that sorry. she couldn't sell anything. Yeah. But you don't have a contract saying you can. <laughs> no, right? but it's always, no, they did not say but in the contract. But you're dealing with yeah. a new person, yeah. which means that it's a brand new relationship. Mm -hmm. How was the event? The event did not, well, <laughs> several things have, the event did not turn out as planned because like I said, the Christ. day of is when I found out I could not sell anything right. besides. Right, but you knew that and went forward, so that's on you. And then um, we end up losing money on seats because he didn't mention me that he removed some of the risers. Did you remove some of the risers? Well, because it was <clears throat> getting pretty old and I had to replace them. But I was never told that. I found this out 15, like just with the food, I found out 15 minutes before the event started. Okay, so there are less 
risers, and why, and that was a problem because? Because he didn't want people on the court, so they had to stay away from the court. That and, makes sense to me that you yeah. don't want people on the court. Yeah. That makes and, sense. All right, and, hold on. Well, but no, you there was it. enough space. Sir, hold it. Finish your thought. And then also, what I was under the impression when he said that I couldn't sell anything like that they sold, their vendors are outdoors. We were indoors. You didn't make as much money off the vendors as you would have hoped. No, not at all. I'm negative, okay. actually. And, and the monies that you're suing for, the $600, represents what? Well, just because of the, the actual, the renting, the facility. We did not do, like, we usually make between $3,000 to $5,000. And you made instead? <laughs> I am negative $400. After I paid for all the merchandise that we were going to sell. And why $600 are you suing? I just want my money back for the actual... The renting out the facility and put it towards. Yeah, was happen. there anything in the agreement that said that there were guarantees? No. This isn't looking so good. For I you. know. All right, Mr. Craig, <laughs> why are you countersuing her for three fifty? For the excessive cleaning that I had to do. Meaning that there was an understanding that she was supposed to clean up after herself. Yes, of course. She was did you clean up clean after up yourself? I did. I cleaned up everything since he didn't let us, you know, sell all the things. I cleaned up everything and our our athletes as well. Cleaned up everything that we used. The stuff. Was there an issue about cleaning in the contract? Yes, of course. What did the mean, contract to, say about cleaning? Yes, she yes, has of to pick up everything. <laughs> yes. All right. She has to clean up everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. But your vendors were also there selling items. Exactly. Well, yeah. Did you factor that in? Thank you. Uh, in the cleaning of everything? Well, the thing is... Because if your just, vendors are causing debris and, and trash and litter, why should she have to clean up after your vendors? That's, that's unreasonable. And is that why you're suing for 350 yeah, I'm suing yeah. her for the cleaning that I had to do for the, for the gymnasium <laughs> inside. Right. But you were selling items that people took inside. Yes. Based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the guy wants to come down in favor of the plaintiff regarding your counterclaim. Your case is dismissed. As it relates to your claim, judgment comes down in favor of the defendant because you didn't handle the contractual terms and agreements prior to. So you get zero, you get zero. That is the order. Case closed. Judge Ross has ruled both claims have been dismissed. I disagree with the judge's verdict. I feel so bad. I feel like I let our team down. Now some of the girls aren't going to be able to play. Can't believe I lost. I should have won. <laughs> and to think she sued me. Coming up on America's Court with Judge Ross. I land, I rush to the hotel room, I drop my things, and then as I'm going to the club and I'm about to enter, I realize that. There's a dress code. They didn't let me in. I was wearing jeans, black shoes, and a button up. I, I would have to wear slacks. I don't think anybody wears slacks to Vegas. Like, you know, like, not everybody. Of course everybody. they do. I was just in Vegas, and I was suited in the boot, and I'm just saying. Closed captioning provided by. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Beck Myers claims he was denied entry to his friend's bachelor party and says it's because the best man didn't tell him about the strict dress code. Mr. Myers is suing Reed Finlove in the amount of $400. Mr. Myers, you didn't get your party on at the club, so now Mr. Finlove is being asked to pay $400. Right. He was a planner for the bachelor party. The name of the groom? Kyle. Kyle. And what was your relationship with Kyle? Well, we all met at my job. Were you part of the wedding party? Well, I was a groomsman. You were a groomsman? Yes. Were you also a groomsman, sir? No, I'm a uh, best man. You were the best man? Yeah. All right. I believe you were in Vegas. Correct. And how many people were going to the bachelor party? Eight. Was there any issue that you had in terms of going with the other eight and Mr. Finlove to Vegas? Well, yeah. So uh, his plan originally yes. was to arrive Vegas Friday afternoon. Okay, that sounds the, about right. And then head to the club. Like that on, night? Yeah, 10 p.m. Okay. So I Land told, Friday evening, get to the club by 10, party through the night, on to Saturday, and what, then come back home on Sunday? Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Finlove, was that what right. you were thinking? Yeah. That, that sounds fine. about right. And what, did you have an issue with that? Yeah, so I told Reed that I'd have to take the later flight because I had a big... Later meeting. flight Friday? Yeah. You weren't going to get there as early as everybody else? I would arrive at 10 p.m. I land, I rush to the hotel room, I drop my things. Yes. And then as I'm going to the club and I'm about to enter, I realize that there's a dress code. They didn't let me in. I was wearing jeans. Oh, you showed up to the club? Yes. And you were wearing jeans? Yes, I was wearing jeans, black shoes, and a button-up. All right. And Mr. Finlove, yeah. talk to me about the dress code. 
Did you know that there was a dress code there? Yes, uh, I knew about it. Coming up on America's Court. I got another job opportunity with, with, with a better position. I feel like, he, you know, try to take revenge, like that was his revenge. Like he was jealous that you got a better yes. job. Closed captioning provided by... This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Beck Myers, who is suing Reed Finlove for bad debt. Did you tell the other eight people, okay, you gotta, you can't wear certain things, you gotta be a little bit more dressed up? Yes, send them, uh, everyone, the link of website of oh, okay. uh, nightclub. So you sent, and did Mr. Myers get that right. link? Did you get the link that he sent you? Yes, but the day of. All right, so did you go to the website? Well, I didn't have time, because I didn't meet Of course meeting. you had time. You had to wait in the airport before the plane took off. Once you land, you've got time to check in and go, all right, let me click this link and see what's going on. You're blaming Mr. Finlove because you chose not to look at the link that he sent you. So he sent the link that day, right? So apparently, like, see, I'm dressed right now, I'm wearing khakis. I wouldn't be able to get in that club, even with this. Right, unless you I'm, click I, the link, yeah. and it says, no jeans. No, but well, I, I would have to wear slacks. Okay. Which, you know, I don't think anybody uh, wears slacks to Vegas. Like, you know, like not everybody. Of course everybody. they do. I was just in Vegas. And I was suited in the boot, and I'm just saying. <laughs> and not to toot my own horn, but I was looking pretty decent. All right? right? People wear, I mean, that's what people go for. And here's the problem that I'm having with, you're making this about you, but this whole weekend is about Kyle. What's the $400 represent? Is the table. It was like a table. To, re to reserve the table. You had to, you had to put down a deposit. Right. Did you put down the deposit ahead of time? Yes. I, Did I every guy have to put down yes. a $400? Yeah, oh, you guys, this is ago. a fancy place. You get to the club, they tell you you can't get in because you're in inappropriately dressed. Right. And what ends up happening? Well, I arrive like around 11.15 p.m. And, and did you guys get there, Mr. Penlope, at 10? Yeah, at 10. All right, yeah, so they're yeah, already yeah. there for almost an hour and a half before you even show up. But you knew that because you knew you were going to be late. I was at a meeting. Working. Doesn't matter. You're making this about you. It's about Kyle. Judge Ross's verdict when America's court returns. Promotional consideration provided by. This is America's court with Judge Ross. I feel like he's had it, you know, out for me ever since I got that job because so I worked with them for what a year. What job are you talking about? You guys all work together. Yeah, but after a year, I got another job opportunity. Okay. Which, with, with a better position. Okay. That I, you know, I took it and I noticed that Reed was acting you know, a little strange, like a little cold. Like he was jealous that you got a better yes. job. Okay. I feel like he, you know, tried to take revenge. Like that was his revenge against That was me. his revenge against you. Yes. This whole weekend's about you. How was the wedding? It was fun. It was fun? Yeah. Did you have a good time in Vegas? It's true, yeah. It's, I never forgot uh, this night, that night. Uh, <laughs> Everybody else had a ball. So much for Mr. Myers, huh? Yeah. Um, I get it. The $400 that you're asking for, sir, based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, that's not going to happen. Your matter's dismissed. Case closed. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I had a great time in Las Vegas. Thanks to Reed, I missed out on a great bachelor party. Follow America's Court on Facebook and Twitter. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.